my name's Amanda and welcome to the seventh block tutorial in my Star Sampler Quilt Along With Me series. Now the block that we're making this time around I guarantee is a lot easier than the one that we did for block six and that block is this one. It is called the Indian Star. So as you can see it looks a lot easier than what we did for block six. This one is simply made out of flying geese units for our points. It has a very easy four patch center square and then is finished off with just a few corner square squares. Yes. When choosing fabrics for your block my best advice would be to choose fabrics which are contrasting in both print and colour. I choose a black print paired with this beautiful turquoise face print from the print shop range. By putting them together it really just accentuates the design of the block. It shows off the star while also adding something a little bit more cool and fun with the face print. I just think it's really cool. As always, you will find all of the measurement and cutting instructions down in the description box below. There is also a link to the pattern sheet which is on my blog. That pattern sheet has a full layout of the block as well as all of the measurements and fabrics that I am using. So with all of that said, this is how we make the Indian Star Block. The fabrics I'm using to make block 7 include the Kachif Solid for my background, Print Shop Hello in Seagrass for my first print and then Print Shop Grid in Dark Charcoal for my second print fabric. So to make the Indian Star Block you will need to cut 4 3.5 by 6.5 inch rectangles and 2 3 inch squares from your background fabric, 6 3.5 inch squares from your first print fabric and then 8 3.5 inch squares from your second print fabric. To begin, place the background and first print 3.5 inch squares to one side and then begin marking a line with a pencil and ruler on the wrong side of each of the 8 second print fabric squares. Place one of these squares into the corner of a background fabric rectangle with the marked line running inwards towards the centre of the rectangle. Pin the square neatly into place and sew on top of the line from one corner to the other. Cut off the excess fabric from the corner with a ruler and blade, leaving behind a quarter inch seam allowance. Then gently press the fabric out with a medium to hot steamy iron. Place another marked 3.5 inch square onto the opposite end of the rectangle and pin it neatly into place. Sew on top of the line again from one corner to the other and then cut off the corner, leaving behind another quarter inch seam allowance. Press the corner out like last time and then repeat the same set of steps to make another three flying geese units. Next, grab the two three and a half inch background squares and two of the three and a half inch first print squares placed to the side earlier. Lay them out into an alternating four patch design. Flip one onto the other and pin them evenly into place. Sew a quarter inch seam along one edge and then carefully feed through the next, chain stitching the two pairs together. Snip the joining threads and then press each of the seams towards the darker side of fabric. Lay the pairs back into place and then turn one over onto the other. Neatly nest the centre seams and pin the edge evenly into place. Sew a quarter inch seam down this edge and then press the seam gently to one side, completing the centre four patch unit. Once all of your block units have been pieced, lay them out together into the Indian star block design following the diagram on the pattern sheet if you need to. Then, starting with the top row, flip both of the corner squares over onto the flying geese unit and pin them evenly into place. Sew a quarter inch seam along one side and then the next. Press each of the seams outwards towards the corner squares. Place the row back into place and then repeat the same set of steps to complete the bottom row of the block. Once 
Once finished, complete the middle row by turning one flying geese unit over onto the four patch center square. Carefully line up the triangle point with the seams of the four patch and pin the edge neatly into place. Then do the same on the opposite side. Next, sew a quarter inch seam along each of the pinned sides, ensuring all seams are lying flat before sewing over them. Then press these two seams inwards towards the center four patch unit. Lay the row back into place and finish the piecing of the block by turning the bottom row over onto the middle one. Line up the center triangle point with the seam of the four patch unit while nesting the two outer seams with the seams along the bottom. Pin the edge evenly into place the best you can and then sew a quarter inch seam along it, ensuring all seams are flat before feeding them through the machine. Patiently press this seam inwards towards the middle row of the block and then lay it back into place. Flip over the remaining row along the top edge of the block. Line up and nest the seams in the same way as before and then pin the edge together. Sew one last quarter inch seam along this edge and then press the seam inwards towards the center of the block. Give the completed block a good final press and then square it up so that it measures approximately 12 and a half inches squared. Now don't forget to keep sharing your finished blocks with me. I love, love, love seeing them. You can share them with me on Instagram using the hashtag Amanda's Quilt Along and also on my Facebook page, which is at three and three quarters. So now that we've got block seven over and done with, we're moving on to block eight. And block eight will be a slight variation of the type of design that we've just done. Again, it will feature flying geese units. We are all going to be absolute experts on piecing flying geese units at the end of this series. It is also another easy one as well. So I am very excited for you to all see it and make it. So until then, friends, thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you another time very, very soon. Bye.